in the springtime. I did it. I bought a 20 year old dual sport motorcycle and promptly fell over. Fell over again. And then I went home and turned some of the parts to black. Bought some used gear. Had trouble getting it up. I survived a camping trip and I spent the rest of the summer getting more comfortable on the bike. So now it feels like it's time to do what I got the bike for and head out on a long trip. Here we go. We are very close to leaving. It is around noon on Saturday morning. Uh, heading out for the New Mexico backcountry discovery route. It's exciting and feels weird at the same time. The New Mexico backcountry discovery route. I've actually done very little research about what kind of route the route is, but I do know that it's a long S-shaped route that takes you through damn near every part of New Mexico. And then if I make it all the way down and come back home, it's going to turn that S into a figure eight for me. It's mostly on dirt, and there's one kind of like it in most of the western states of the U.S. if you want to check them out. <laughs> I don't have any idea what I'm doing, but I've got the roots. I've got a lot of baggage here, some food, I got a bunch of water. I have no idea how long it'll take me and I really don't care how long it'll take me. I'm gonna try to film a bunch going down there and see what happens. Should be really fun. <laughs> Seems a little loaded. Loaded up that is with what I hope is everything I need. I'm not even alone. Evie's made me a little friend to take along. His name is Jiggy and together we are on the road. There we go. Off on the BDR, the New Mexico BDR. Who knows how far we're gonna get. I got some real mixed feelings. I do not like how I'm packed. This backpack feels way too big. I do not feel ready. I have been to exactly one night of camping before this. Not even a single night, multiple times. Just one single night of camping with this gear on this bike. And it is getting cold, and I don't know. I don't know, I just don't know. <laughs> I really hope I like this. I feel like I have got to get the amount of stuff that I have packed with me down. The bike, I don't know if it feels bad or not. We'll have to get on the dirt and see how that goes. And it's going to be a while before that happens, because we're going to ride up to Abiquiu, which is probably 45 minutes or an hour. But that'll give me a chance to get settled in here, figure some stuff out. Who knows? Who knows is the theme of today's ride. All right, here we actually go this time. We'll be out of town momentarily, all gassed up and ready to go. The bike is full of gas, but I do not feel ready to go. I do get myself up the road to Española here, right across the Rio Grande River. For safety, I did leave my turn signal on all the way through Española something that we do here in New Mexico when we're passing through towns. If you're out in the country, it's a good idea as well, but passing through towns especially, leave your turn signal on, that way everyone can see you a little better. I do make the mistake here coming up of turning it off. There it is. But I survive, rest assured. I make it up to Abiquiu, New Mexico, which is where you can see the tourist's car sitting outside of George O'Keefe's house. And then I make it to Bodie's gas station, which is my starting point for New Mexico's backcountry discovery route. And I do not know how I feel about it. The cute little angle on this camera might be well known to any of you filmmakers out there as a Dutch angle. Here we know it is a New Mexico angle. It's only real differentiation is that it's caused not by some quirky trick of filmmaking, but by the half-assery with which we do things here in New Mexico. I do hope you'll agree with me that these are pretty pictures here down by the river with the colors going by. However, 
Would they be made better if they were level? Maybe. Maybe that's why I'm pulling over right now. You gotta stay straight up for me, buddy. Hmm. It would appear not to be the case, since I seem to have left it at the same jaunty angle, but let's keep going and see what this first taste of dirt on the New Mexico BDR has to offer. Turns out it's gonna be one of my favorite little bits of dirt, definitely the favorite piece that I'm gonna ride over today. It goes through a really beautiful little section of land, over some little washouts, and through some really short introductions to sand, but before we get to the best part of it, I am gonna get forced to fix this camera angle. Oh, what the hell happened here? What's the problem here, man? It's interesting. Hmm, that looks much better. This little road coming out of Attitude, New Mexico, does start to get really fun. It was my favorite piece of dirt, like I said, for the whole day. You can even see my traveling companion, Jiggy, having some fun back there, wrapping himself around the selfie stick. I turned a corner and went down a little descent here, and the whole world started turning red. Something that happens in this part of New Mexico quite a bit. But it was really nice to go through this little red section and come out down here by the river, right along the river for a little while. The main goal of my first day, I felt like, was just to get myself out there on the trail, camp one night, and then see how this whole thing was going to play out. Whether I like this or not, whether I want to keep riding this route all the way down to Texas. God, it's gorgeous! Maybe just run home with my tail in between my legs. I don't really know what's going to happen, but I think it'll become apparent pretty quickly. And this seems to bode well for the route as a whole. It is really gorgeous here. I'm just riding along the river. We're gonna ride up the backside of a dam, I think. It was true. I rode up a few little switchbacks up the back of an earthen dam. Had a cool view of the valley I just rode through and then turned onto this road. I just don't really like you guys enough to show you that part of it. Either that or I'm new to cameras and forgot to push record or lost the footage somehow. But I got to go right along this road, which is one of my favorites in New Mexico. It's Highway 96 between Abiquiu and Cuba, absolutely filled with these red cliffs. Can't recommend it enough. I rode it for a little too long, missed my turn off, turned around, and started thinking about where I was going to sleep. Might start looking for a camp. It's only, what time is it? 4.49. That seems very early. Hey, dirt road! I'm curious what this road's gonna be like, man. Not this one, but the whole route. Is most of it gonna be this style? Is it gonna be harder? I do not know. And on I rode. It was getting a little cold as the sun went down. I was looking for a camp spot, pretty much like you'd want for your car, with a flat spot and a fire ring. And I just couldn't seem to find anything, either on this main road or some little roads that I turned down to look. And eventually the sun was sinking pretty low, and so was my camera. We made it somewhere. I was getting a little worried that I wasn't going to find a place to camp. Kept pulling down little side roads where I expected to find uh, you know, campsites with a little fire ring and stuff, because that's usually how it is on forest service roads, but I turned down two or three and they were like long roads to gates or one was to a beautiful meadow, but I just didn't feel like I was supposed to be camped there. There was no fire ring and it would be nice to have a fire. It's starting to get a little cold. Found a nice spot here. 
I'm gonna set up the tent, probably make a little fire, probably cook a little food and go to sleep. It's been a good day. God damn. Ah, it is cold. Good morning. Whew. Man, I woke up this morning. If you can call it that. I'm not sure I ever went to sleep last night, but we're at like 9,000 feet here. I had to put on more clothes inside of my sleeping bag, all like a mummy, fighting. It's amazing how strong the, the will to not get out of your sleeping bag is when you're cold. Uh, I wanna get south and lower in elevation, just to go to sleep tomorrow. I never sleep well the first night on a new thing, new, even if it's just a hotel. First night I'm in a hotel, I always sleep. Kind of like shit. I did have a bit of a Madras lentil tragedy in the night last night. I was tying my food bag in a tree and the branch I was tying it to broke. So came smashing down on the bottom and one of those little bags of Tasty Bites, Tasty Eats, whatever that's called, exploded in the bag. And when I got up and made my tea, I noticed a little bit of Stuff that looks the same on the way out as it does on the way in. On the corner of the bag and I checked and it had exploded. So I had lentils and rice for breakfast, which was fine. Problem I do have is this finger is not happy. I don't think it's swollen. But just right in here, I can feel that it hurts. I made the mistake of cutting all my nails a little bit too short right before I left, which is stupid. I haven't done that for a long time, but they weren't that grown out and I just wanted to cut them. Mm. I don't think it really has anything to do with that. This nail is just angry at me. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's not a problem. I forgot to put in earplugs because it's impossible for me. Oh. It's impossible for me to start the first time I get going. Okay, earplugs in ears. Hopefully, it'll be fine. Everything else. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. I think it's pretty obvious that I was not quite feeling it yet. One day into this ride, these perfectly graded gravel roads weren't really piquing my interest, and that night in the cold without sleep didn't really rejuvenate me for the following day. But after I got myself warmed up once the sun finally hit me in my camp, I did get back out on the road at least. I started the day off by talking to my camera while riding for quite a while actually about how I thought it was going poorly but then I realized I hadn't even turned my camera on. Huh, just wasn't recording. I have no idea if it was recording at all when I was talking. All I was doing was complaining about how I feel weird about doing this and how I don't actually know how to do any of this. Ride a bike, film, have fun. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I just don't know how to do this. I am doing it. <laughs> Maybe by the end of this, I will know how to do it. Who knows? It is funny. I've talked to my family and friends about this a lot. It seems like 
Every time I go out on a multi-day, multi-week, maybe months long trip, it takes me a number of days to get my sea legs under me. And up until that point, I'm not even sure that I want to be doing the thing I'm doing. I've never left on a trip and had it end up that I didn't have a good time or I didn't find it interesting at least or I didn't get challenged by the whole situation. But the first day, sometimes three days, I often find it pretty challenging to even feel like I want to be doing the thing that I'm doing. It's funny, I haven't seen a single other motorcyclist doing this road. All yesterday I didn't see anybody. I thought maybe I would be passing people going the opposite direction, but... I'm guessing it's either late in the season for them, even though... Oh, fuck. God damn it. Oh. Oh. I'm okay. Oh man. Son of a bitch. Didn't see that turn coming. Huh. Oh. Fuck. Oh man. I just didn't see that turn coming at all. Coming down there. Oh, man. Hopefully everything's fine. Here comes the car. They're going to ask if I'm all right. Oh. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I think I'm cool. I got it. You need help? Uh, sure. Why not? Yeah. Get another New Mexico angle. This one comes with a bonus mic detachment, so we don't get to hear what went on here, but just obvious things. Can I pick up the bike here? Where do you want to go with it? It was nice to have some help, if I'm honest. Well, that happened. The bike seems pretty good. I had to mess with that attachment for the bike, both both of my attachments basically blew up and then this one back here I had to reattach that but it seems good I have not tried to start it yet or move it did run into a tree so there's that but there we go seems like it's all right everything runs I so far, I'm fine. We'll see if I feel it later. But I feel fine right now. Everything on the bike seems fine. Everything's back together. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about how poorly I think this is going <laughs> while riding. Who knows? The power of positive thinking, is that really a thing? I don't know. I do know I'm going to be shaky when I get back on the bike right now. So here we go again. At least we got that out of the way, I guess. cautiously kind of just wandering seeing what it felt like to be on a motorcycle on a gravel road again ah 
Back on pavement. I was so close to getting on the pavement. Jesus Christ. Ah. I don't know what to say about that. Got a little bit of time to shake it off before I get back on the dirt. I don't know. I do not know. I'm fine. The bike is fine. And happily I had a really nice mellow asphalt road that was pretty fun and curvy and beautiful to look at to ride down and take my mind off things so I just had a seat chilled out on this road for a little while actually blowing past my turn by quite a bit but enjoying the road until I turned around finally and enjoyed it going back up the road as well When I did finally reach my dirt road to turn off onto, I was feeling trepidatious at best, but this road didn't turn out to be a silly gravel-covered graded snooze fest that tempted me to go too fast and get in trouble. It was just a nice dirt road through some really beautiful changing leaves with gorgeous views from the top, which eventually came back down to spit you back out onto the pavement to get you to head towards Cuba, New Mexico, but there was a bridge out on the way to Cuba, so I had to turn back around, and instead of going to Cuba, I headed to Torreon, New Mexico, to fill up my gas tank, but not before catching up to these cowboys and making my way through their whole herd of cows. It was actually kind of a lovely experience and pretty fitting for the mood I was in. It slowed me right down. That one kind of looks like she wants to fight. There she goes. It's really interesting trying to get cows to get out of your way instead of just run away from you straight down the road. It seems like the key to me is going kind of slowly. It seems like you have to kind of convince them that you're just the boss cow and they want to go to the right, but not just take off down the road going faster than you because the faster you go behind them, they just go a little faster and you end up breaking them into a sprint, and I assume cowboys don't like that at all. After all that nonsense with the fall, and the feeling like I wasn't having any fun, I pretty much stopped filming at all, and it was nicer, so I'm going to mostly do that today. Uh, we'll see how much I film. Back on the dirt. It's bumpier on this side of the road. And we have sand. very deep at all. La Leña Wilderness Study Area. It was gorgeous. And a little while down the road I came to this right hand turn that snuck up on me and revealed this, should we call it, gorgeous valley. It really was stunning and it was a complete surprise to come around that corner. I had no idea the earth was going to drop off in the way it did and definitely no idea how beautiful this little area would be. It blew my mind. I really wish I had a drone, but I did go to all this trouble sticking my GoPro up on a stick behind me. So watch me vibrate around as you take in the glory of the Southwest Desert. difficult to figure out when to stop riding in these spots. I think the sun isn't in a really no annoying place if you're driving to the west, but 
Do I really want to stop? It's like 4, 4.30. Oh boy. Sandy right at the bottom. Starting to get used to the front end slipping. But that is going to be a long process, I think. Just about now, I think the heat of the day was sinking into my tired brain, and I started to have this fantasy about finding a hot springs to soak in. Oh, Jesus, Sandy. And mostly, just out of curiosity, I looked at my map to see if I saw anything, and there was something labeled a spring just down the road right off my path, and so I started heading that way. Ha! Huh, that was a fun road. I had dreams of soaking my weary body and then just setting up camp right next to the springs and spending the night. Hello cows. I think you can probably hear it in my voice, but I was feeling much better at the end of this day once getting on this road with its grand vistas and the shadow of that mitten-shaped rock we just passed. Getting out of the trees and off the boring gravel roads really helped me a lot, and I really couldn't think of anything better than sticking my tired butt in some hot water and making myself some pasta. I am on the lookout for a place called Cool Springs, hoping that it's a hot spring. Ah, there's a gate. That's what it does. Okay, I did see one little track over there. Let's see if that takes us there. There's a track. That's just a cattle trail, but let's see what happens. It pretty much points directly at the spring. So... Got some erosion here. That's not it, obviously. We've got a sign over here. What does that say? Financed by a fee collected from hunters, anglers, and trappers. Huh. I think it means that I'm not going to find a spring. Is that it? That could be it. Yeah, it looks like that's it down there. It is both fenced off and... Not a hot spring. That's sad. All right. Whoa. So, I think this is as good a place as any. This is just the same spot that I stopped to check and see if there was a hot spring. It's right down there, but there wasn't. So, since this is BLM land and I'm tired, this is as good a spot as any. Success. I bought this stove and cook set at the beginning of the summer. It's now October, the middle of October, and I just cooked on it the first time. But I have success. Pasta with a veggie even. My God. Mm. Oh. That was better. That was a much better night. Much, much better. <laughs> We're like 6,300 feet here and we're further south and I did not freeze. Kept all my clothes on in the sleeping bag still, but not freezing is a big step. It was so quiet here last night and the Milky Way was just horizon to horizon. Saw a shooting star, saw a million airplanes. There were so many airplanes out there. But other than that, just quiet, quiet, quiet. It was really cool. I got up fairly early, 8.30 or 9. That's early for me. There's a tiny bit of connection here, so I got to text a little bit, communicate with somebody, man. I left two days ago, and since Abiquiu, since I got on the trail, the biggest place I've been to is Torreon, New Mexico, which is not a town. It's like a gas station on an Indian reservation, I think. And so there's just scattered houses here and there. Out in the desert, I sat there and had some chips and cheese and a nice tea with a couple little puppy friends. And then I moved on. My spirits were up at the end of the day yesterday. Those roads were much more fun and the scenery was much better. It was pretty much just in the woods beforehand, but we're out here in this desert that you probably can't really see on this camera, but it was pretty amazing. 
It was kind of like New Mexico's Monument Valley in a lot of ways. I do think I feel better about it since getting since getting off gravel roads, really. Gravel roads suck. And since crashing, <laughs> which makes sense. So today we go, today we wander around. Time to wander, but not today for you guys. Next time I'm gonna show you the rest of this desert, this little section of desert at least. There's a lot of desert in New Mexico. I don't know who's gonna watch these videos. I suspect it'll be my friends and family. But if there's more than 10 people watching it, thank you very much. If there's 10 people watching it, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed these things. I put out three of them on the same day. So if you liked this one, go watch some other ones. If you already watched another one, thank you. If you like them, tell me. I would love to hear any criticism, any constructive criticism, probably any non-constructive criticism. Do your worst, I suppose. But let me know what you think. Also, push the subscribe button if you want to see the rest of my trip. I think the most, I think the thing I'd like to see you do the most is just go watch another one of the videos. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep doing it. I did survive this trip, I can tell you that much. I'm still alive. My bike is still alive too. It's here, the battery's dead because, you know, it's winter and it's